Everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101, and we are overdue for another episode of Blast from the Past, which is where we go back and look at things that maybe we've already reviewed or things that have been out for a long time, and no one's talking about them because they've been out already. But they're still available, they're still good options, and for the most part, they're more budget friendly. So, as promised from another video here recently, the one that we're going to look at again today is the Yarez Chapa from K-Bar, which is the largest knife in the series. Average price is right between you know, 100 and 109 for this. So we're gonna take another look at it because, hey, why not? Maybe you didn't see it the first time. Maybe you've only got 100 bucks to spend, but you need a big ass knife. So in case that's you, don't go away. Okay, so let's run down the specs on this. It has a blade length of 9.875 inches. It's got a black powder coat, but it's not like a thick, scratchy one. Uh, made in the USA by K-Bar. The handle is a brown ultra mid material, which is one of the many fancy words for a type of plastic 1095 carbon steel. It does say 1095 carbon steel, not 1095 CV. I'm not sure about that. I thought it was the same as the Beckers. I'm gonna look. So it turns out I was right. It is 1095 Crovan carbon steel. Just didn't say Crovan or CV on the sheet that I printed out. It has a woven polyester Molly style sheath plastic insert overall length on this is 15 inches it's a plain edge it is going to give you cancer if you live in California but then again <laughs> I think they think dirt gives you cancer in California or sand it's like it's so annoying uh, drop point full tang uh, Rockwell hardness is 56 to 58 so there is the stats on this. Now as far as revisiting my impressions on this knife, what struck me in the beginning was as a larger knife, this one is more, it feels more light, it feels more fluid in the hand. It's a large knife that kind of handles like a medium sized knife. The shape of the handle, which yes it is wrapped, get over it, uh, does make itself very comfortable and does lend itself to heavy chopping, snap cuts, that sort of thing. Now unlike the Becker BK9, this does have a choil and the lighter uh, blade weight does give it more of an ability to choke up and do finer tasks with this knife like feather sticking. That's one of the things I like about it. Like most Becker's K-Bars in the sort, it's not going to have a spine that's going to give you that kind of uh, sharp spine utility unless you do modifications to it like I used to do uh, with the K-Bar Becker series. The only thing I don't really like is just aesthetic. I don't like brown handles. I don't like brown handles on K-Bar. I don't like brown handles on tops. I don't like freaking brown handles on anything. I think we sh I think. Brown handles are what California should make a law about. Like, brown handles give you cancer. That, that should be a thing. They give my eyes cancer. I can say that. Um, so, yeah. That's it. Let's go ahead and do some chopping with it. I mean, it is called the choppa. So This is going to be good for light chopping tasks. This is not a replacement for an axe or a heavy chopper. But if you're just doing some very quick you know processing some kindling down very fast in the hand once you got that edge dialed in it does quick work of kindling it's been 
while since I used this. I got a pretty good edge on that. So there's that. But having not used this in quite some time, I'm going to go ahead and choke up using the choil. Where's the most straight edge? Maybe we need to go down to this side. And this is not something that I could have ever done comfortably with like a BK9 due to the differences in the design. But with this one, it is nice that you can have like a 9 inch blade still get some feathers with. Tawning is not about splitting giant firewood logs. It's usually about making kindling or doing some sort of crafting. So we don't have to worry about how big and crazy this is. But it does have the right grind geometry to baton very easily. Even that up there. Yeah, we're just doing stuff like this with a large knife. It's not so something that's normally comfortable, but it is with this one. That's probably one of the biggest points that I like about this. I'm just doing some craft chopping for tent stakes or whatnot. If you can hit it, aim matters. If I get a bigger stick. I mean, this thing does great. It doesn't need to be a pry bar. With normal intended use, this thing's going to last you just fine. And for people that like to stick to the myth that CPM 3V is hard to sharpen, you know, this is not going to be difficult to sharpen. I don't always carry a large ceramic rod in my pack, but if I was out using something that was like, you know, 1095, it would be a good idea to, just to keep it touched up. It's easy enough. You know, the trick is just don't let your knife go dull. That's all it takes. Jeez, that is, <laughs> that is screaming sharp. But is it shaving sharp? Yeah, I would say so. Pro to get it really shaving sharp, I'd have to strop this edge out a little bit, but... Yeah, that is one of the nice things about 1095 CV, especially with a ceramic rod. You want to touch it up, it's very easy to. All right, just give it a little bit of a more of a test on some bigger, heavier wood. Not, I mean, obviously we're not going to use this blade to chop through something this big, but it does show, you know, how it bites. I get a little crazy or I'm trying not to hit my camera in the process. 
does a really good job uh, at biting very fast in the hand. So the nice thing about this doesn't cost a whole heck of a lot of money. It's versatile, maybe a little bit more than average versatile for this size of blade. And it's going to be good in a lot of different uh, regions and environments. So overall for a large blade, it's a pretty good deal. And I think most people are going to be happy with it. So in order to choose a place to send you, I don't, where did I get this? I mean, way back when, if I'm not mistaken, I think I actually got it from K-Bar. Could be wrong. But uh, we'll just uh, pick our old friends from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. If you want to pick one of these up, I'll have a link to get it in the description box below. So there you go, another blast from the past. And I had to do this because <laughs> I'm about to review a folder. And I'm afraid people are going to lose their frigging minds. Like, not in a good way. More like in a... MSK1 sort of way. <laughs> I got something, I got a brand that I've never gotten a chance to review before. I'm like, of course I'm not going to pass it up. And it's this large extreme ratio folder. <laughs> and it's a cool folder, but when I looked up the price tag, I'm like, my audience is going to murder me. But we're going to do it anyway. So, th so that's why I wanted to get this one out here first. So we got a nice little budget knife ahead of time to kind of like, you know, smooth out those uh, skids, add a little lube, get people ready, you know. So all in all, K-Bar, Yaris, Choppa, great knife. All right, guys, Chris from Prepare Mind 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Check all those links down below to help support the channel. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.